What's up everyone? Welcome to the Foreign Fork YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you the recipe that I learned in Italy for how to make homemade pasta. So keep on watching and I will take you along for the ride. I've been making pasta for my entire life with my family. My mom's family is Italian, so we always make Christmas pasta. So I've always had a family pasta recipe that we've made, but when I lived in Italy, I had a really good friend, and she taught me this pasta recipe, which I actually like a little bit more. So that's the recipe that I'm gonna be teaching you today. So we're gonna start off with 400 grams of flour. Now I'm making pasta for four people, and so the way that the servings work is you need 100 grams of pasta per each person that you're serving. I have my counter all nice swiped clean, and I'm just gonna take my flour and dump it right into the center there. Now I'm gonna kind of make my hand look like this, like a nice mamma mia Italian hand, and I'm gonna plop it right down in the middle of my flour and move it around so that I make a well in the middle there. For every 100 grams of flour that you use, you're gonna need to have one egg. So I'm gonna take my eggs and I'm just gonna crack them, one-handed if I can, into the center of this. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that one. I've been practicing my one-handed egg cracking skills. It was a big success this morning when I finally did it right. Now that I have my four eggs cracked in here, I'm gonna take my olive oil container, and I know it's not an exact measurement, but a drizzle is what I normally do, so I'd consider that a drizzle. So I'm gonna do one drizzle for each serving of pasta. And then the same thing, I'm gonna do a pinch of salt for each serving as well. So literally just take a pinch, put it in there. That's one, two, Three. Now I'm gonna take a fork, and what I'm gonna do is whisk up the eggs that are inside of this well. So I'm gonna whisk them up so that they're all kind of combined in here with the olive oil and the salt. And then slowly, I'm going to start incorporating some flour from the outside of this well into my eggs, because eventually this is obviously gonna be our pasta dough. As we mix, I'm gonna combine the flour until it gets too thick to stir with a fork, and then I'm gonna start kneading it with my hand. Okay, now you can kind of see that it's starting to get to be a little bit of a pile of flour instead of a circle. And then I'm gonna start kneading with my hands. So, get my hair out of my face over here. Okay. Now I'm just gonna kind of, if you watch the motion of my hands, I'm gonna kind of grab it from the outside, pull it in, and then push it down and forward like this. So that's how I'm gonna knead my dough. I'm just gonna grab the flour, pull it in toward me, and then push it out and down. And then you're gonna keep kneading like this until most, if not all, of the flour is mixed into your dough pile. So I'm gonna form it into like, make it look a little bit like a loaf. And leave it here. Now I am fortunate because for Christmas last year, my mom got me the best present ever, and I have um, a KitchenAid attachment for making pasta. So that's pretty easy. I also do though have a hand crank as well um, that I, used for years with my family, it's my grandma's. So if you have a hand crank pasta maker, you can use that. It's just a lot easier to use the pasta attachment, so I'm gonna be doing that today. Okay, so I'm using my, like I said, KitchenAid attachment here. So this is the attachment that's gonna roll it out into a flat sheet of pasta. So I'm gonna take my knife and just cut a little piece off the end. Normally when I do this, I don't like my pasta to be sticky, so just in case, take a little handful of flour and I just kind of like rub it on there. And then I have my pasta maker on the first setting. So it's on setting number one. Now the settings on every pasta maker are different. So I can't tell you exactly what number to have um, based on whichever pasta maker you have. But what I can tell you is you're gonna want one that like probably the first setting that's really wide. It doesn't really make your pasta dough that thin at all. So you're gonna start with that one. So on this I do one, then three, then five. So I'm gonna turn this on to a pretty low speed and I've put flour on the outside of this and I'm just gonna kind of feed it through the top. Now, if your pasta dough is a little bit dry, you might end up with like cracks and holes in the middle of your pasta sheet. Mine wasn't dry, so it's fine, but if you did add like a little bit too much flour, you might get holes in the middle. In that case, just fold it over, and I'll even do it now, just fold it over and then run it through again, and that should kind of clear up any cracks or holes that you get. 
So I just did it through on one, now I'm gonna change it to three, and I'm gonna roll it through again. This is gonna make it thinner and longer than it was before. Move it from three to five, and then this is gonna be the last time I run it through. So this is gonna be the thinnest and the longest that it's gonna be. Now I have a wooden board here that's sitting next to me, and that's normally what I like to lay my pasta out onto. I'm just gonna spread some flour onto it, and then I'm going to put my pasta dough on there too. Then I'm just gonna take it like a little bit, a little pinch more flour, and like kind of spread it on top, just to allow it to kind of dry a little bit. Then I'm gonna repeat the same process again. So the last step for making this homemade pasta is that I have now attached my fettuccine maker onto my KitchenAid instead. I am gonna do the exact same thing I did before, turn it on a really low speed, I'm gonna take my pasta sheets and feed them through and then use my hands to catch it at the bottom. And as you can see, it's coming out really nice fettuccine noodles as it goes through the pasta maker. I'm gonna put it back on the wooden board and then I'm just gonna do the same thing with all of my sheets here. Now, if it takes a long time in between when you roll them out into sheets and when you actually cut them into noodles, make sure that you're covering your dough. Um, we put a little bit of flour on the dough, which is gonna dry it out just enough to keep the pasta noodles from sticking to each other as they come out. But if you put the flour on the dough and then you walk away and you leave the dough for an hour or so, it's gonna dry to the point where it gets brittle and it won't cut into pasta noodles very easily at all. And that's it, it's as easy as that. So if you want to make your pasta right away, like if you have a pot of boiling water and you're ready, you can put the pasta in the boiling water without let, letting it dry at all, and it'll cook almost instantly. It'll be ready in maybe 30 or 45 seconds. Normally, when I make my pasta, I normally try to let it dry at least overnight, but if I can't, that's totally fine. Um, I'll do maybe like six hours or so so that it's a little bit dry, even if it's not completely hard. If you tend to make your pasta and then want to cook it later on, like if you're meal prepping or something like that, you can store this in, um, in your fridge or in your freezer. And there's more instructions for that too on my blog post that I wrote all about making pasta. So you can find that at www.foreignfork.com slash how to make homemade pasta. Thank you so much for watching guys. I have so much fun cooking with you. Things that I've learned in other countries, that's my favorite time that I get to spend talking to you and teaching you too. So thanks for sticking by and I will talk to you soon.